Hey! Welcome to part 2 of the Doodly Pro lightsaber tutorial. In part 1 we went over how to model the lightsaber. Now in this part we're going to be focusing more on how to make that lightsaber glow. But first, let's go over how to animate the lightsaber turning on and off, do some quick texturing, and if you promise to be good and eat all your vegetables, maybe we'll have another test animation. So here we are in 3D Studio Max, and the first thing I want to show you is how to make the lightsaber look like it's shrinking and growing, essentially turning it on and off. And the way we're going to do that is, I found this box, and it uh, just keeps coming back to my doorstep. I don't really know what to do with it, other than use it for scientific experimentations. Or we could just go over to our Modify tab and apply the Morpher to it. So the way the Morph modifier works is you have to duplicate the object you want to morph, and then without adding or subtracting any vertices or polygons from it, you manipulate it. So in here we can add a, a twist modifier and twist that sucker. And then we can maybe copy him and get rid of twist. Don't need more for either right now. And add a stretch modifier. Stretch him out. And then maybe we'll duplicate this guy too and squash him down. So now we have these three modified objects that came from the original box right here. We didn't change anything about it other than its shape. So what we can do with this is select our original box, scroll down here, and pick object from scene. Then we mouse over, we get a little crosshair, and I can select box number two. Then I can go back up here, select the next box, and what we can do to make it easier on ourselves, instead of having to scroll up and down to pick object and scene, we can just right click and pick from scene right here pick our second box and right click this one and pick from scene there's our boxes now if we look at our main box right here if I move these sliders it morphs into the other shape we can also stretch it or squash it not to mention we can mix and match to manipulate the object even further so that's morpher so how is the morpher gonna help us make the lightsaber turn on and off well, that's easy. All I'm going to do is duplicate our lightsaber by holding down shift on the keyboard and dragging it over. And we'll rename this one to be something like off. Make sure it says copy. Press OK. Then with this one selected, we're going to go over to our vertex mode. Select the very top of the lightsaber and pull it all the way down. Make sure it's inside here. There we go. Then we'll click out of vertex mode and go back to our main lightsaber where we'll go to the modify list and select morpher. And we can go through the same process again where we right click, pick from scene, and select our off lightsaber. Now when we move the morpher slider, lightsaber turns on and off. Now obviously we don't want this random lightsaber here to take up space in our scene so we can just right click it and select hide selection and it's gone. And of course if you ever want to get it back you can always right click and select unhide all and he's back. But we don't need him here right now so we'll just get rid of him. Now that's taken care of let's add some textures. I'm gonna go up here to my material editor and if your material editor doesn't look like this one you can always go back to the first part of the tutorial where I show you how to set up this thing. What's this called? Material editor. Perfect. I'm gonna start out by making a few different colors here and setting up the material that we want to glow. Go to our first slot, and I'm going to change specular level to something like 150, and the glossiness, I'm going to leave it 10. Name this silver. Go over our next sphere, I just want to name it black, because we are going to make it purple. I'm just kidding, I actually want it to be black. Dark purple. Violet! Our specularity up and the glossiness up a bit and then finally we're gonna make a red material I'm gonna make this one red or real and specularity up glossiness up maybe specularity not so high and I actually really do want this to be black saturation down. The hair we go. 
Now for this sphere, since we want this to be our glowing material, we don't need to do anything to the color or any of the settings at all. All we need to do is go to where it says Material ID Channel, click this and change it to a number other than zero. I'm gonna go with three. All right, Material ID Channel set. Now let's start applying our textures. First thing I'm gonna do is make sure our lightsaber is selected. Go to the Modify tab and select Polygon. Now I'm gonna just go and grab all of this and then hit the shrink button a few times so I get something like that I also don't want that part right there and I'm gonna go in between each of these little ridges here and alt click on all of them so all I have selected is the rigid grip part then I'm gonna click on my black material go to material and select assign to selection Next, I want to select everything but what I just selected. What I'm going to do is press Control i on the keyboard, and what that'll do is invert the selection. So everything that wasn't selection is now selected, everything that was is not. What I'm going to do with that is go to our silver material and assign that to this selection. Now we just have a silver and black lightsaber. From there, I'm going to select this band right here, and then hold down control and select that band as well. Looks like I got a little too much. Just like that. Hit the grow button and looks good. Just need to get rid of that. And I'm also going to apply the black to these bands here. I'm going to do the same thing to this band up top and the band right below it. Hit the grow button and make sure black select it, assign a selection. Looks like I got a little carried away up top, but that's alright, since this is the part that's gonna glow. What I'll do is I'll just select the very top of it here, zoom in so I can see what I'm doing, hit the grow button a few times until this whole section is filled in. Then I'm going to apply the glow material. One last final touch, I'm gonna select the button and add the red material. I think also I'm going to move down here and select that part of our lightsaber and also apply the glow material to it. Now it looks pretty good except for the fact that we don't have a glowing lightsaber. And that's easy to take care of. All we have to do is go to rendering, environment, and in environment we want to switch to the effects tab, add an effect, make sure we select lens effect, okay. Then we go down and it gives us our different types of lens effects. We want a glow lens effect. Hit this arrow here. And now if we scroll down, we have glow parameters. Well, we want this to be a green glow. And also I'm gonna rename this to be green glow as well. Now if you remember, we changed the material ID earlier to three instead of zero. And the reason we did that is when you go over to the options of your glow effect, we can tell it that whatever has the material ID of three to glow. Just hit the render button, bam, it's glowing, but it doesn't look quite like we want it to. So let's go back to our parameters, change this to an actual green color. Since it's named green glow, we're going to drop the size down to 0.1 and the intensity we're going to boost up to maybe like 150 or something like that. Now, if we render, we get this nice greenish yellow glow. And we can also change that so it's not so yellow. And bam, there you go, glowing lightsaber. Now the nice thing about this effect is, say we want more than one color glowing lightsaber. Well, we can just select the first lightsaber here, hold down shift on the keyboard, make a duplicate of it, and press OK. Say we want this to be a blue glowing lightsaber. Well, I can select a new material and give this a different number, say two this time. Go back to our lens effect parameters and add another glow. This time we'll name this blue glow. Uh, drop that down to 0.1, intensity up a bit, and we'll change this to a blue color. Now all we need to do is go in and select the top of our new lightsaber and apply the new blue glowing material. Now if we render, nothing happens. And that's because I forgot to go into the options and change the material ID to 2 because we made the blue glow material ID 2. Render. Blue. 
Now that we have a glow set up, I'm just going to go and quickly make myself a floor and maybe a few boxes here and there. And what you'll notice when I render, even though the lightsaber is glowing, it's not actually producing any light. So the easy way we can fix that, move this up a little bit, make sure we're in the Create tab, go to Lights, change the drop down from Photometric to Standard, and just add a little Omni Light in the scene. Also, I'm going to hit Control L on the keyboard so I can see what I'm doing. And now I'm just going to align this Omni Light to my lightsaber. Okay, bring it up here so we can see it. Hop over to my Modify tab and make sure we change the actual color to the light to match the color of the glowing lightsaber. So in my case, green. And I'm also going to change the decay to inverse square and then boost it up. And that little circle actually shows where the fall off of the light will be. So it's probably a little too big. Now if we render, you'll see that the lightsaber is casting a green light on the floor and those boxes. I'm also just going to go back to the Create tab and throw in another Omni Light just so that we can see what we're doing. I also want to make sure that it is not green as well, so we don't want the whole entire world to be green, just our lightsaber, because that's the way it should be. There we go. One quick thing that you don't want to forget about this light is you need to link it to your lightsaber. That way, when your lightsaber is selected and you move it around your scene, the light stays with it. If you don't link it, then whenever you move your lightsaber, your light's going to stay behind and it's going to look really funny. Now we've built and textured our lightsaber, made it glow, and applied the light to it. The only thing left to do is to animate it, turning on and off. So let's go down, turn on our auto key, and what we want to do is make sure on key filters we have everything selected so that everything gets keyed. First thing I'm going to animate is the light. So we'll start at zero with everything turned off. So what I'll do is I'll go to my Modify tab and make sure I have the multiplier for the light set to zero. Then I'm going to move forward 10 frames and put it back to one. Move back to zero, select my lightsaber, and move our slider all the way to 100%, turning our lightsaber off. Move forward another 10 keyframes and animate it back up. So now our light turns on and our lightsaber grows. And the last thing we need to animate is we need to go back to rendering and our environments. Make sure we're in the effects tab again, select the lens effect, and down here our green glow. We're going to select our green glow and we're going to make sure we start with the intensity at zero. Then we're going to move forward 10 keyframes again and set it back to 150. Turn off auto key. Now if we render it at frame 10, everything's turned on, it looks good. But if we move back to frame 0 and render, everything's turned off. Of course in the middle, it's half as bright. And congratulations, you're now a proud new owner of a 3D lightsaber. One final tip, if I would animate this thing moving forward, Go back to the middle and render. Nothing really interesting is going on here, but if I right click on my lightsaber, go to object properties, under the motion blur section where it says object, if I check that, render again, we'll have some pretty neat looking motion blur. And now as promised, as a special bonus for those of you who made it to the end of this tutorial, I give you the lightsaber test film number two, this time with more blasters. Well, that was unnecessarily dramatic. And just a quick tip, I made the blaster bullets glow the same exact way I made the lightsaber glow. And now we've reached the end of this Doodly Pro lightsaber tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope it helped you out. And be sure to come back next week when I show you how to escape all of your troubles by tying a bunch of balloons to your house and floating away, only to later find out that your childhood hero is trying to kill you.